Hey everybody, Mr. B here and welcome to The Loft. So I'm starting a new series I'm calling Retro Southern Classics where we're gonna explore all those old fashioned forgotten recipes going all the way back to the 18th century and up through and including the campiness that was the 60s and 70s. These are the recipes that your granny and your mama and your uncle boo-boos used to make that we just don't see around much anymore. So today we are going to do a chess pie. So today we're going to explore um, a group of pies known as desperation pies or make do pies. These start showing up in the late, mid to late 19th century. Chess pie is made with four basic ingredients. You've got flour, sugar, butter, and eggs. So think custard. So let's talk about the crust for just a minute. So if you want to make your own crust, go ahead, but I'm using the trusty old frozen. One thing that I have noticed in doing research on the desperation pies is that they are lard based crusts. In other words, you're mixing shortening and or lard into your flour versus a cold butter crust. And I think that there may be a few reasons for that. One, is probably climate control, right? So butter requires a lot of climate control needed to keep it stable. We didn't have a lot of that in the Southeast United States in late, mid to late 19th century. Um, so, you know, unless you had like a really cold spring of water coming out of the mountain, you know, butter probably was not gonna be your friend. So I think that's why you see this a lot with a lard or shortening base crust. Chess pie is a southern classic. Now, there's quite a lot of speculation as to how it got its name. Some would say that, you know, the gentleman would retreat into another room with this pie and they would play chess. So they called it chess pie. Others would say that it's just the southern dialect. You go, what kind of pie is that? It's just pie, which morphed into chess pie. And then there's another school of thought that because of the sugar content in this thing, it doesn't require refrigeration. So it could be stored in a pie chest. And um, that sort of with the southern dialect morphed into chess pie. So I have no idea if any of that is true. So if you know, leave me a comment below and uh, educate me. So let me show you what you're going to need to make your chess pie. We're gonna do about a cup and a quarter of sugar. In here, I have two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and one tablespoon of cornmeal. You heard me correct. Two tablespoons of evaporated milk, one tablespoon of vinegar. You heard me correct. Three eggs, we're gonna dash a little vanilla extract. By the way, I did put a pinch of salt into the flour and cornmeal because I am not using salted butter. And we will also use delicious one stick of melted butter. You're just not going to believe how fast this comes together. You could actually do this in a blender if you wanted to. I'm gonna start with my sugar. Let's go ahead and get that going. Flour in the cornmeal. Let's go with this butter. Look how beautiful that grass-fed butter is. And we will do our evaporated milk, our vinegar, and then we're gonna crack eggs. In they go. And we're just gonna beat the shit out of it. Okie doke, so we have got our pie shell ready. Now I'm not doing a blind bake on this. I guess you could, you know. Um, anywho, to our pie shell, which I should probably be doing this while it's sitting on the oven rack, we're going to pour our custard on in that. Now again, you want a large, deep dish pie shell for this. Now, 
Let me get every bit of this out like it owes you money, okay? Beautiful. Okay, thank you for your service. Now, in a 350 degree oven, we're gonna go about 45 to 50 minutes. Um, I'm gonna check it at 45. What you're looking for is for this, to, it's a custard, right? So it's gonna set up with maybe still a little cream brulee kind of jiggleness in the center. So let's throw it in and see what happens. Middle rack. So we have hit the 45 minute mark on our chess pie. So I want to just kind of pull that out, give it a little jiggle. See, it's way too wobbly right now. I think another 10 minutes is probably gonna do that good. So we'll see what happens. All right, kids, let's take a look at this chess pie, right? So it's been in here now about 55 minutes and I think we're going to be good to go here. Look at that. How beautiful is that? So let's see, I'm just gonna, it's got a slight give. Now you could do the toothpick test if you wanted to. I don't feel like there's any need here. I think we're good. I'm gonna put this on carefully maybe and a wire rack there. And of course I broke it to let this cool. It's gonna to need to come all the way down to room temperature. Um, doesn't need to be refrigerated, uh, but you do wanna let it cool down before you cut it. So, I guess we'll see you tomorrow. So let's try to cut into this thing. Now, obviously, first piece out of a pie is always a problem, right? So I've heard that there's a hack if you kind of snip that. All right, let's see if I can get this out without it falling apart. That's beautiful, it's moist. But how does it taste, right? Let's see what we got here. I like that kind of crunch on the top. You see how curdy it is on the inside? Mm, still a little warm. Well, that is surprisingly delicious. As simple as that is, you know, if you were craving something sweet and didn't have much on hand, this would be the way to go. Mm. I'm gonna make this whole damn pie. One. All right, kids, and there you have it. Southern Retro Classic Chess Pie. Simple ingredients, I'll guarantee you've got all of this stuff on hand. So, click subscribe, hit that notification bell. I've got more Retro Southern Classics coming your way. See you later.